How's it going everybody? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video. In this video, we are going to talk about the route object. It is an object I said deserves its own tutorial video. It is finally time because it is so useful. What the route object lets us do is route different bits of information based on the way they're labeled um, anywhere we want in Max. And we can do that simultaneously. Uh, so, so useful in so many different use cases. Uh, and we're gonna show a pretty cool example today with that. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First things first, we're going to start by creating a JIT.movie object. I figured this would be a good object to demonstrate the way route works because the JIT.movie object has a lot of different attributes. We're gonna set one of those attributes right now uh, by saying at vol zero in the object box. So the volume will be off in the video, no matter what video it is. I'm doing that so that way I can still talk to you while the video plays. But the important stuff is actually uh, what's gonna come out of this outlet. This is the dump out outlet, and a lot of objects in Max MSP have a dump out outlet. If you send the message get state to an object that has one of these dump out uh, outlets, it's going to output the attribute state, the state of every attribute from this outlet. So if we create a print object, and we attach that dump outlet to the print object, and we click on this icon over here to open up the max console. I'm gonna click this X to clear it, and then we're gonna lock the patch, click that get state message, and you can see exactly now what I'm talking about. This is the state of every attribute for JIT.movie. So our output mode is set to one, our out name is this, our dim is one by one, and adapt is set to one. Like literally everything attribute wise about this object, it's all here. And uh, what's super cool about the get message is we can actually also send any uh, specific attribute request. So if we say something like get loop, uh, we, which I'll do, get loop, we can just patch that into the JIT.movie object, click that, and you see at the very bottom now we printed that the loop is uh, in state one, which means it's on. And we could do that with any of these attributes in this list. So we could also do get frame count. That's one of them. Uh, and we're going to click that. And same thing. It just printed the frame count, which is zero, because I haven't loaded a movie in here yet. So uh, super useful to know right away. And what we're going to do in this patch is we're going to use this um, get request message for the JIT.movie. Uh, and we're going to route the certain things we're requesting out to other things, and we're gonna make that all interactive. Uh, so let's just keep moving right along. Since uh, we're going to be using the JIT.movie object, we need to read a movie into the object. So to do that, we're just gonna create the message read, patch that in there, lock the patch, um, and click it, and you would load in whatever movie file you want. I'm actually also going to create this object called load mess, which will load a message upon opening this patch for the first time. And we're gonna send the same read message, but we're gonna say bball.mov, which is a built-in video file in Max that um, is just for the sake of using this tutorial is gonna be a little bit easier to show things with. So I'm gonna double click that object with the locked patch, and now that is loaded into this JIT.movie. Um, and you can do the same thing if you'd like. Uh, so with that, we just now need a window to see this movie in. So as always, we uh, use the JIT.world object to do that, and I always say at floating one, at FSAA1, and FS menu bar zero, these are attributes for the JIT.world that uh, I just always like to have set. And we're gonna create a toggle, I did that by pressing T, gonna lock the patch, click it, turn it on, and now our JIT.world is rendering. So the only step left to do in order to see our video is to create a video plane to exist within our world. So we're gonna say at or jit.gl video plane at transform reset to. And now we have a video plane in here that reaches the edge of the window. We're gonna patch our jit.movie into it. And now we can see that movie in that video plane in our world. And it is the video of the kid playing basketball. So that is super cool. Now here comes the real fun part. What we're going to do next is we are going to send those get request messages to the JIT.movie. And we are specifically going to get the position of the movie, uh, 
which will be a normalized value between 0 and 1, 0 being the beginning of the movie, and 1 being the end of the movie. And we also are going to want the dim size of the movie. And if we just patch these messages into the JIT.movie, we can then create a trigger object, which I'm going to say TLBB. Um, so that way, when we patch this JIT.movie into the trigger object, and I'm going to delete this patch cord, we're going to first send a bang to the get dim message, then a bang to the get position message, and then through the L outlet, which is a list, we will pass each frame to the JIT.GL movie plane. So now, in this order, we're getting the dim, dim of, the, uh, of the video, the position the video is in, and then the frame, we'll see it in the window. Uh, which is super useful. And now if we um, create a message box real fast and attach the dump out outlet into that, you'll see we're getting this message position uh, and that's the position value. And this is also outputting the dim value real fast. It's just these are outputting um, iteratively one after the other. So we can't see both of them in the message box at the same time. We're just seeing the last message that gets sent out, which happens to be the position. But that's not a problem because this is where the route is going to come in handy. Since this is the position attribute, we're just going to say route position. Uh, and we'll patch that in between our dump out outlet in this message box right now. And out of this outlet, it says output if matches position. And you can see now we have routed the position and the floating number value that followed out into this message box. And that's how route works. You define what this inlet is looking for. It says number or list to be routed. Uh, in this case, we've defined it to look for position. It saw the message position and the floating value. And it said, okay, because that says position, I am going to route whatever comes after position out of this position outlet. And we define that in the route and this, because we put that there, it is this outlet. We can put another one. We could do dim, which um, would be the, the label for the other dim message that we're getting the request of. And if we attach this outlet, which is uh, now the output if matches dim, because that's the second one we defined, so it's our second outlet. If we patch that into the right inlet of the message box, we are now seeing the dimension size. And so that's essentially how this works. And if we go back real fast to our Max console, if we put that print object back right here, um, and you see it's actually, it's printing everything right now because we're constantly sending this message. I just wanted to show that we can use the get state message and all of the things, all of the attribute states that pop up, any of these we can route out and use with route. And this is the label it's going to look for. It's like if you were routing the FPS uh, and you wanted that FPS value, you would put FPS in the route. Or if you wanted the frame count, which you know would be very useful to know, it's the maximum number of frames, you see it's labeled frame count 68. So you'd put the frame count in the route object and out of that outlet that it creates for that would be that value 68. All of these, all of these are possible and they're all very dependent on whatever object you're using this with. Each attribute is specific to that object. So with that in mind, um, we're going to go back to working on this and we're going to use this position in dim value to do some cool things uh, with this video. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to change the hue angle, which we can do using the jit.hue object. And if we just patch this outlet that's passing our frames of the video to the video plane, and we run that through this jit.hue object, then we're gonna press the A key on the keyboard real fast. It's gonna create this adder UI object, which we'll patch into jit.hue, click on it. We'll see there's the attribute hue angle. And if you just slide this up, you'll see uh, as you do so, you rotate the hue of the video. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take this position value and we're going to scale that to be a complete 0 to 360 angle rotation. So on the start fr start of the frame it will be normal color which is set to 0 and then as it plays um, it'll rotate up to 360 which will bring it back to its baseline color that it's supposed to be. And the more frames there are in the video the longer it will take to do that but it will go through one entire cycle um, regardless, which is pretty cool. Uh, so let's just do that. Let's create a scale object and we're scale zero to one to be zero to 360. 
Um, this is our input range. This is our output range. We're going to use the position value as that input range because that's between 0 and 1, and that's what we defined it. And then we're going to get a value between 0 and 360 out, which we can patch right into the adder UI object to update this uh, attribute for the JIT.U, and you see it's working. We are now rotating through the colors, um, and it does one full cycle and the start to end of the video. Um, and it doesn't have to end there. We can keep adding effects onto this. Let's do another cool one. Let's do JIT.ROTA, which I always love to mess around with. Now, uh, as we've talked about in the JIT.ROTA tutorial video, we have to define our anchor points uh, with JIT.ROTA for certain effects to work uh, properly. And it's always a good practice to just at least start with the anchor points being half of your X and Y of your video dimensions, which we're getting using this get dim message in the route object up here. So it's super easy. We're just going to unpack those dimension values uh, using the unpack object. And we'll take the X and we'll multiply that by 0.5, um, which will cut it in half. You could also just divide by two. Either way, it's OK. And then we're going to say prepend anchor X and prepend anchor y. So we'll just stick the message anchor x and anchor y on front of whatever those float values are, patch that into the JIT.ROTA, and now whatever the dimension size is of this video, it, we could change it to a completely different video. The anchor points will be set to half of whatever that dimension size is and be right in the center. We're going to patch JIT.hue through the JIT.ROTA and patch that out to the video plane so that's working. And um, yeah, this is just really cool. This is a really cool setup for this because it is dynamic now. We could change the video and it would it would still be right in the center of the video. Um, before, we would have to hard code that into the JIT.ROTA value and that is just not the most efficient way to do that if you were trying to create something where you could quickly load in different videos and still get this same effect with consistent results. So super useful, and that is another just reason why route is so useful, and we're here talking about it right now. Um, but back to the patch, shall we? Okay, so because we've defined our anchor points to be the center, we're now going to use the zoom X and Y effect. Um, we could say prepend, we could create adder UIs. I'm gonna create adder UIs, uh, why not? And we're gonna patch that into the JIT.ROTA, lock the patch, click on it, select our zoom X and zoom Y. And rather than, as this goes from the end, the start to the end of the video, I want it to start from the normal size and zoom in. So that's just reversing this zero to one value that we're getting for position, which we don't even need a scale object for. We can just say uh, exclamation minus one, which will take this value that's going into this left inlet and subtract it from one, which reverses the direction. Uh, and that makes sense because 1 minus 0 is 1, but 1 minus 1 is 0, so it flips it. And now look at that cool effect. Um, and we could just keep going. There's so much more we could do with this. JIT.ROTA has a lot of attributes, um, and it's very interesting to see what it does. I had mentioned that this you know, allows for a dynamic setup. We're going to get the same exact effect. No matter what video is in here, um, it's going to zoom in from the center, and we're going to go through one full Rambo cycle. So I'm going to click that read message now. Go find another video on my computer. Uh, let's do this one. And we're going to watch that work as well. Uh, and you see the dim size is larger. And the video is longer. There are more frames. So it's taking longer to do the effect. But we're still getting that full uh, rainbow gradient and that full um, zoom in from the beginning to the end of the video. It still matches the whole idea of that and making that part interactive so that's what that is so super cool like that is way this patch already is way more versatile than had we just created the same effect but not done this stuff with route so i hope that's a really interesting use case of why route is valuable you know it lets us just pass information anywhere from the state of the video and we can use this to do so much with that um, I'm going to end the tutorial video here. If you guys found that helpful, please uh, remember to like and subscribe because that's how I know you found it helpful. If there are any questions, please feel free to leave that in the comments down below. 
Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.